Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we're going to the Isle of Iona to have a look at the nunnery and St Oran's Chapel. St Oran's Chapel dates back from around 1150. The chapel was derelict until the Iona community began restoration in the first half of the 20th century. The doorway arch is stunning and distinctly Norman. The surrounding graveyard is much more ancient. Dedicated to St Oran, I'll pop up a link to his story now, it has been in constant use since St Columba's time here. A traditional burial ground for Dalry Adden and the Scottish Kings, a survey in 1549 listed 48 Dalry Adden and Scottish Kings, 8 Norwegian and 4 Irish Kings too. Many of the grave markers can be viewed in the Abbey Museum. I'll pop up a wee link for that now. The graveyard is still in use today, and 1994 saw the interment of John Smith, the leader of the Labour Party. His epitaph simply reads, An honest man's the noblest work of God. Also interred here is Neda Fernario. Her unfortunate demise can be found on this link above. So this is the Augustinian nunnery on Iona. Built in the 1100s. A series of small rooms, since central heating wasn't really a thing. A lot of the nuns here came from well-to-do families and the nunnery in its time served as a refuge for illegitimate children, displaced women, just anyone that needed that wee bit of extra help. The windows, the shape of these windows is a traditionally Irish design, which would make sense since Columba was the first dude over here. Um, I think there's doors somewhere as well that have that sort of archy point to it that refer to the fact that it has Irish roots. I'll head up this way. We're getting a proper bird's eye view as I see it. Oh, look at that view. Housing of it in earlier years would have been used for more well to do families for their daughters to come here really as a pilgrimage to the island. But it really is quite stunning. A wee bit of scaffolding up, but we can't complain because we don't want it to fall down. Look at those windows. Oh no, 
has a really gorgeous vaulted ceiling as well. And obviously, like so many churches and monasteries and abbeys that we go to, it has a little ducat where the offerings would have been placed. Still in the sacristy and you can see even though it's been well worn by the weather that this really has quite a lot of detail on it and must have been really quite magnificent when it was first put in place. Here in the corner of the site we have a couple of cross slabs. The crosses aren't here but I imagine that we're probably going to see more than our fair share of crosses as we travel around Iona today. And here outside St Ronan's Chapel we have the graves of the nuns and a little memorial for someone who did a little restorative work here. St Ronan's Chapel is obviously used for storage at the minute but if you look right at the back wall there there are original pieces of the stone but for my owner, and I see some new pieces of marble where obviously when they restore they'll get put into place. Here we have more graves from the nuns. Some of them actually have quite high relief on them. Though, like I said, with a lot of the ladies coming from quite well-to-do families, I imagine their families got the headstones made. This is a part of the abbey where Christian and pagan beginnings are intertwined. This is a sheen in a gig, her legs open over the window. They say she was used to ward off evil, but could also have been used for female empowerment. As you can see, this was the family home of George MacLeod, he founded the Iona community. What an impressive home it is. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and leave me a comment, it really helps the channel. If you want to catch me on my next adventure, please hit subscribe. And feel free to join me on Exploring Scotland's History on Instagram and also Facebook. Thanks for watching.